This is a video tutorial about the energy assessment method 3, which is based on dynamic and auto-calibrated building energy models for EPCs and developed under the context of the Horizon 2020 project Ipanacea. This video tutorial is divided into these five sections. A first part for an introduction to the assessment method itself, and then the rest of sections include each step of the whole procedure. So, First, the development of a building energy model through the CEPAP tool, a, a local software developed under the project. Then a, we will move on to the auto calibration procedure and next the correction to a standard section. And finally, a, we will take a look a, to some of the results a, available after a, conducting the whole assessment method. Then let's go. We we'll start with a brief introduction on the assessment method 3. For some context, uh, the Ipanacea methodology includes three different uh, methods for assessing energy buildings performance. These three methods cover different techniques and complexities for inclusion of data driven methods into the European Union EPC schemes. These three methods are uh, a smart and performance data driven of building energy performance assessment. The assessment method 2, a simplified method based on monthly calculation interval based on the international standard. And finally, the method 3 is the advanced and automated simulation modeling based on dynamic simulation for EPCs, which is the method uh, where this video tutorial is focused on. Well, the objective of this method is the development and optimization of a procedure for using dynamic simulation and calibrated models within EPC schemes, including cost effectiveness improvement of the whole process regarding the state of the art of this type of assessments. The global concept of the suggested methodology for EPCs is summarized in this figure, the so-called EPC cycle. This approach implements a sequential structure that enables uh, obtaining a calibrated model based on actual consumption patterns, it means the EPC in use, at the same time that will provide a more accurate standard EPC after correction by climate and use. This approach covers two different perspectives for the EPC. On one side, improving the information provided to end users based on their actual consumption patterns through the EPC in use, and on the other hand, the standard EPC will keep the administration requirements for the objective comparison of the building stock. The workflows steps included within the EPC cycle are explained as follows. First, data gathering. For instance, building documentation, utility bills, monitoring data from BMS, spot measurements, actual weather data, and so on. Okay. Secondly, the development of a first version uh, for the B building energy model with dedicated tools. Third point is the definition and adjustment to actual peak loads and operational schedules. Then, a classification of data sources to define calibration variables and the range of variation. Next is the auto calibration procedure using uh, parametric assessment uh, tools and optimization algorithms. The next step is the selection of the final calibrated model what means also the selection of values for calibration variables. Next steps is the correction to a standard by climate and use, so based on actual weather data, operational schedules, peak loads, and so on. Finally, we will see how uh, we obtain results, for instance, the overall performance indicators, partial indicators, monthly disaggregation per fuel and service, and so on. And finally, uh, the energy efficiency measures could be evaluated based on actual use. It means on the calibrated building energy model. To support the workflow of the method, in addition to a web platform called CEPAP, the Smart Energy Performance Assessment Platform, we have developed in the context of the project several additional tools to enable the, cal uh, the calibration of the dynamic simulation model automatically. The CEPAP tool has been developed as a local tool based on OpenStudio. OpenStudio is a cross-platform collection of software tools to support whole building energy modeling using Energy Plus as a simulation engine. OpenStudio is an open source project to facilitate community development, extension, and private se sector adoption. OpenStudio includes graphical interfaces along with a software development kit. 
This cross-platform integrates different open source applications that can be customized to meet the ePanacea project objectives through the CEPAP tool. Among them, the CEPAP tool integrates OpenStudio, SketchUp plugin, OpenStudio application, the path, the parametric analysis tool, and OpenStudio server. The scheme for the calibration within ePanacea methodology is shown in this uh, figure. Calibration is defined as the process of reducing the uncertainty of a model by comparing the predicted output of the model under a specific set of conditions to the actual measured data for the same conditions. Mean bias error and the coefficient of variation of the root mean square error are the statistical indices employed to evaluate the calibration. Approaches for calibration fall along a spectrum of completely manual to fully automatic techniques. Manual calibration uh, combines human intelligence, expertise, and experience into a trial and error process which has the potential to lead to a calibrated model that is more reliable and closer to the actual building. On the other hand, automated can be treated as a multi-objective optimization problem, which is a mathematically uh, based rather than physically based approach. In this case, the, under the ePanacea project, the iterative calibration procedure, this part of the, of the scheme, is carried out through a multi-objective uh, genetic algorithm at server level. Uh, taking advantage of uh, computing power. And now, with this introduction, we are going to move to the next section of this video tutorial, section 2, that is the development of a building energy model through the CEPAP tool. Well, uh, for that, we are going to conduct a case study specifically an office uh, building uh, located in Spain. This is a public uh, office uh, building uh, built in 1994, but renovated several times. Specifically, its HVAC system has been renovated and a PV roof of 27 kilowatts has been installed in 2017 to provide on-site renewable electricity. The useful floor area is around 5,000 square meters uh, that accommodate to uh, 230 people. The original building included a glazed facade that is being gradually renovated since 2017 in order to reduce its thermal transmittance and improve users' thermal comfort. Its HVAC system is mainly composed by four condensing boilers, for heating and one chiller of 350 kilowatt for cooling, located uh, all of them on the roof of the building. The distribution and emission uh, for heating and cooling is carried out by a four pipe fan call systems. Then the building is supplied by two energy sources, natural gas for heating and electricity for cooling, lighting, distribution and other electric equipment. One of the last renovations implied the replacement of the whole lighting system by LED lamps with day lighting dimming control and present sensors, besides a central BMS for building control and energy use monitoring was installed in 2020. To start with the case study through the CEPAP tool, which is the software that supports the IPANACE assessment method 3 based on auto-calibrated uh, building energy models, we need, as the first step, uh, to open uh, the SketchUp 2022 Pro. Once the program is open, we can see that the CEPAP tool is installed in the extensions tab and that there is a floating toolbar with the most used commands. We start by creating a new project from the CEPAP tool. When creating a new project, we will be asked for the path where we want to save the new project and the name of this project. In this case, we will leave the default suggested path and we will call the project sepaptooltutorial.osm. Once the project is created, a new window will open. In it, sepap will request the following inputs. First, 
weather data. We must indicate the weather data that we are going to use in the model, bearing in mind that it must have actual weather data values for the year in which the model is going to be calibrated. In this case, it will be the actual weather data of Pamplona for the year 2021. Air changes per hour. As we don't know the data, we will keep the default value of 0 0.63 air changes per hour. Air permeability of windows. Knowing the age of the windows, it is estimated that the air permeability will be 27. And finally, the year in which we are going to calibrate the model, which must coincide with the year of the actual weather data, in this case, 2021. Now, we will start to create the geometry of the building. The geometry of this sample will be introduced in a very simplified way using some of the SketchUp and the SEPAP tools. To create the spaces, we will import the file in DXF format that will contain the plan of the spaces that we want to create in the building. When importing the DXF file, it is necessary to make sure that the scale of the file we are importing is in the same units as the SketchUp file we have initially opened. In this case, both scales are in meters. We proceed to import the file. Over the DXF file, the areas that will be later become the thermal spaces of the building are drawn. All the floors of the building will have the same thermal spaces. The surfaces that we have just created are selected and the tool Create the Spaces from Diagram will help us to convert them into spaces. In the pop-up dialog, we have to enter the height of the floors and the number of floors of the building. Be careful when entering the floor height as it must be in the same units as the SketchUp model, in this case in meters. Now we have made the volume of the building, the next step will be to match the surfaces. With all the spaces selected, we will use the Surface Match and Redefined tool from the SEPAP floating toolbar. Surfaces in contact with another surface in another space will be matched and the model will know that they are interior surfaces in contact with other spaces. Now. You can check that these surfaces have become interior by using the Render by Boundary Condition tool. Matched surfaces will be shown in green, while exterior surfaces in contact with air will be shown in blue, and surfaces in contact with terrain will be shown in brown.
Windows are also entered in a simplified way using the Windows to World Radio tool implemented in the setup tool. The building has continuous horizontal windows along its enter facade. After selecting all the spaces and clicking on the tool, we will indicate that the window to wall radio is 49% and that the windows are located 1.22 meters above floor level. The tool will implement windows equivalent to 49% of the surfaces on all exterior walls. For this reason, it's important to match surfaces before creating the windows. In the same place as the Windows to Wall Radio, we find the Window Frame tool. This tool is used to define the characteristics of the window frames and dividers. Next, we will define the construction set for the building. The construction set assigns the constructive characteristics to the different surfaces of the building. Exterior walls, floors or roofs, interior walls, floors or ceilings, exterior windows, and so on. The setup tool includes three different construction sets generated by default, corresponding to three different insulation levels for the building envelope. These three insulation levels are no, low, or high insulation. A new ad hoc construction set can be created for the building if the composition of the building envelope is known. In our case, one of the default options will be used. Now, we will define the elements that will cast shadows on the building we are modeling. A SketchUp geolocation tool will be very useful for those buildings that are close to our model. We add the location of the building and put it in place.
In this case, the only building that casts a shadow on our building is the one to the east. The other buildings are to the north or too far away. We will use two auxiliar lines to draw the shadow. One for the base of the building and one for the head. We will do it this way because when we use the new shading surface group tool, the geolocation image will not be visible. The purple side of the shading surface must always be oriented towards the sun. It is important to include in the model as remote shading the plane corresponding to the photovoltaic panels. With the help of the tape measure tool, we identify the vertices of the surface of the photovoltaic panels to create the new shading surface group. We have finished the model and now it is time to convert the spaces into thermal zones. First, we will identify whether they are habitable or non-habitable spaces. In this case, all spaces are habitable. Therefore, we will use the Define Conditioned Spaces tool. We have two types of spaces in the model, large perimeter office areas and a central space where the stairs, elevators and, and distribution areas or corridors are grouped. With the Define Conditioned Spaces tool, we will define the characteristics of each one of them. First, we will define all the thermal spaces of the office type, a space category office, and then the central spaces of the building where the stairs, elevators and corridors are located, a space category corridor. We can use the Outliner tool in SketchUp's default tray to select all the spaces of the same type. In this case, we will first select all the spaces of the office type. In the pop-up window, we will indicate the type of space, in this case, a space category office, whether it has heating service, cooling service, both or neither. Our spaces have both services. We must assign the previously defined construction set. In this case, we know that the enclosures are insulated and knowing the year of construction of the building, we will use the construction set defined by default, low insulated. The space head of the spaces, which is the distance from the floor to the ceiling, in this case, 2.55, and the lighting power of the spaces. In this case, it's the same for all the spaces in the office, and is 10.3 watts per square meter. Click OK, and a message will indicate the number of spaces that have been updated. Repeat the process for the space type, space category, corridor.
Well, uh, once we have uh, defined uh, the whole envelope, uh, space definition, thermal zones, uh, construction sets, uh, and so on, we are going to proceed uh, introducing uh, the thermal system, the HVAC systems, and so on. So, first of all, we are going to define the domestic hot water installation. So, we have to go to the SEPAP tool tab to HVAC definition, and here in domestic hot water definition, this uh, window appears where we need to define uh, the domestic hot water needs. In this case, we have a demand of uh, 230 uh, liters uh, per day. These, uh, these domestic hot water needs are covered by electricity with a thermal efficiency of the system of 100%. And uh, we need to define here the tank volume and the tank overall heat loss coefficient in case you know that or you need to calculate. In this case, we are going to estimate 100 uh, liters and uh, three uh, value for the heat loss coefficient. Okay, this is now created. Now we are going to introduce the mechanical ventilation of the building. In this case, uh, we have uh, an air loop to uh, introduce uh, outdoor air with an uh, airflow rate of uh, 20,000 uh, cubic meter uh, per hour. So we are going to select first the therm all the spaces that are covered by this installation. This is the whole building. And now we are going to go again to the CEPAP tool, HVAC definition, and this time we are going to introduce an air loop with heat recovery. Here uh, we have a central air loop, so the answer of, to the first question is no, we don't need an, uh, a specific air loop for each zone. Is just one for the whole building. In this case, we don't have bypass for the heat recovery, so the second answer is also no. Here we need to introduce the air change per hour associated to the uh, airflow rate introduced by this uh, installation. In this case, the 20,000 uh, uh, cubic meter per hour is equivalent to one point. 43 air changes per hour and the efficiency for the heat recovery is a is a 50 percent and the fan power associated to this uh, feedback if to this air loop is 10,500 uh, baht it means uh, 10.5 uh, kilowatts of power for the all the fans are needed to move this airflow rate. Then we push OK, and here the installation is is introduced. We are going to save the model just in case. Before uh, opening a uh, Open Studio application to finish the introduction of uh, the introduction of the HVAC system uh, with the related uh, water plants and, and so on, we are finished um, here in the SketchUp uh, plugin the introduction of the photovoltaic system. For this, we just uh, need to select the siding surface that we have already uh, draw for this purpose and then go to extension, step up tool again, I go here to HVAC definition and introduce the PV system functionality. So this window is open so we just need to select a new distribution center then we need to specify the fraction of a uh, of included surface area with PV cells. In this case, 
according to the PV installation and the surface uh, we have uh, drawn, this fraction is uh, 63 or 0 0.63. The cell efficiency of uh, this installation is 0 0.185 and the inverter efficiency is 0 0.19. So we just need to push OK and the PV system has been introduced to our model. We are going to save and we are going to reopen the model in order uh, to see that the PV cells are drawn in our model. Uh, well, uh, now we are going to proceed uh, to implement uh, the rest of the HVAC uh, system element uh, into uh, our model. To do that, we are going to uh, use directly the Open Studio application. To open this, uh, we just need to push the Run button in our Cepap tool toolbar. Once uh, we have uh, uh, pressed this uh, button, we just need to wait until the Open Studio application is open. Now we are going to move to the HVAC systems tab, just like this. When this uh, section uh, is open, we can check that we have here already a one central installation associated to the ventilation, to the mechanical ventilation system. Here we have uh, our fan, the heat recovery uh, element, and the rest of uh, elements that provide with uh, outdoor fresh air to each space uh, zone of our model. Now, uh, to implement the water plants, uh, specifically the heating uh, water plant and the chilled water plant, we are going to use uh, first a template. By default, we just uh, going to select this one and add to our model. This template, by default, uh, automatically generates several templates that we are going to use uh, some of them, but others we just uh, need to, to delete them. For instance, uh, this is not going to be used, so we delete this. We are going to use this one. We are going also to use the hot water loop, this, but for instance, we are not using the condenser water loop because this time uh, we have a chiller uh, condensed by air, not by uh, water. So we delete this. And now, in the case of the hot water loop, we are going to define our uh, system. In this building, we have four uh, chill, uh, four boilers, four condensing boilers. So we are going to define here each of them. First time would be boiler hot water, and we are going to define its uh, nominal capacity with 82 uh, kilowatts, and then the nominal thermal efficiency with 0 0.8, and the design water flow rate to provide this thermal power is 0 0.0030. Nine thirty-nine two three four four. So we can save this model, and then we are going to introduce uh, the additional uh, three other additional uh, boilers. We just need to to look for them in the library section here in the in the. B boiler hot water. So we just need to add here 
and four boilers. We are going to edit these uh, figures. Nominal capacity again, 82, and the same a water flow rate, design water flow rate for this capacity for all of them. Well, uh, once we have uh, introduced the four boilers and edit uh, their main characteristics, uh, we need to take a look to the rest of components of the hot uh, water uh, plant uh, loop. For instance, the pump of the, of the water loop here, we are going to review these uh, characteristics and we are going to introduce here the water uh, flow rate that this pump needs to 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 move is the sum of the four uh, design uh, water uh, flow rate what is this uh, quantity 0 0.015 69 uh, 3 we are going to leave the, the the full rated pump head because it's a uh, very similar to to the design um, to the design value, so it's fine. Uh, next, we also uh, can introduce an element to uh, to model the um, the heat loss uh, due to a uh, pipe uh, distribution. In this case, we are going to introduce here a pipe uh, construction. It's a pipe uh, outdoor in this case because this installation is located uh, on uh, the roof of the building. So we are going to search uh, the pipe, pipe outdoor element. So we need to select this and just add uh, this element to the loop and here we are going to uh, leave in this case the default values but we we, um, we can edit the pipe inside the amateur and the um, the pipe length and the pipe construction to model the uh, current um, heat loss due to this uh, distribution uh, system or to this distribution element so uh, after we have defined these elements, we also need to take a look to the demand side of the water loop. This uh, have to be connected to the emission system that uh, will be uh, fan coils. Uh, but in this case, uh, this we are going to, to introduce uh, this uh, after we finish with this definition. In this case, this element uh, is not uh, necessary because this uh, coil uh, was part of the template, so we are going to uh, delete in this case. So now we have the whole uh, supply equipment, the, the whole supply uh, site of this uh, hot water plant. Now we are going to proceed uh, exactly uh, in the same way uh, with the chiller uh, uh, water loop. We just need to select this one. We are going to delete also this uh, coil because uh, this is um, this was introduced uh, by default by the te template, so it's, we are not going to use it. Now we have uh, a chiller. In this case, uh, is the installation uh, we have a chiller uh, condensed by air. So we just need to review uh, the characteristics, the technical characteristics uh, included in in the description description box. So in this case, the reference capacity is a uh, three fifty uh, three hundred fifty uh, kilowatts. So in baht. 350,000. The reference a uh, COP for this equipment is a uh, 2.94, and the reference um, the reference living uh, chiller 
uh, water temperature is 7 uh, Celsius degrees and the reference center in condensed fluid temperature for this is 35 uh, Celsius degrees. The reference chiller water flow rate for this equipment, for this installation is 0 0.016. Seventy four six four one six four one. This is exactly the same um, water flow rate that we are going to introduce here in the pump with this uh, rated flow rate. So it's fine. And uh, in the case of the of the chiller, just. Uh, comment or remainder uh, here uh, you need to define the uh, the curves the operational curves for this uh, equipment so we are going to to use the this uh, the four uh, equations but uh, if we have a uh, data um, of the actual equipment we can uh, just adapt these uh, curves for the actual uh, equipment. So we are going also to include here a pipe, an outdoor pipe uh, for um, model heat losses or in this <laughs> case uh, cooling uh, losses no? uh, due to this uh, installation, to this distribution system. So we have introduced directly this element just in the same way that we have already done for the hot water uh, plant loop. So now we just need to introduce uh, the emission system, the fan coil unit that uh, would be uh, the equipment uh, in charge of uh, provide uh, heating or cooling to the thermal zones. For this, we are going to use a measure, a measure already included in the in the CEPAP tool. We just uh, need to go to this tab, component and measures, and apply a measure uh, now. The, the window, uh, this window appears with this message. You must save your model before applying a measure. Okay, we save uh, our model. And now uh, we are going uh, to uh, wait for a couple of seconds to until the uh, next uh, window is open. Now it is. Well, now we just need to move to the HVAC section here and then select the whole system. And now we are going to use this measure at fan coils. Now we need to select which type of uh, space we are going to add fan coils. In this case, we are going to proceed uh, introducing fan coils to both uh, space uh, type uh, categories to a space cut office and we just need to select the heating plan and the cooling plan and apply measure now then we are going to proceed to um, apply applying again the add fan coils measures to the another space category. Select again Athan coils and we are going to apply this to the space category corridor. Select the same water plants and apply measure now. Once we have applied the measure Athan coils to add a one unit to each space or each a thermal zone of our model, we can see here in both plant loops that we have here the coils associated to the fan coil unit, the cooling coils associated to the chiller water loop, and uh, for the hot water loop we can find here in the demand equipment also the coil, the heating coils uh, associated to 
the heating uh, part of the of the fan coil unit. We can see here the fan coils, but also here in the tab for uh, thermal zones, we can check that uh, each space has associated several uh, equipment, specifically zone, uh, zone equipment that for this building is an air terminal a single dot a single dot constant volume unit for a provide outdoors a air to the space and a second equipment a, that is a, a zone HVAC for pipe fine coal a unit a, to provide heating and a cooling to each space so this is what we have uh, just introduced uh, through the, the measure apply of ad fan coils. Uh, well, uh, now the HVAC system will be ready to run the simulation. Uh, but before of that, uh, regarding the lighting system, uh, the luminaires in the office uh, incorporate the lighting control that enable uh, the automatic reduction of lighting power according to the natural light available uh, to maintain a specific set point. This control system uh, can be implemented into the model through a measure in Open Studio. So again, we go to the Components and Measures tab, go to Apply Measure Now, and here in the window of Open Studio uh, application, we can select the electric uh, lighting uh, tab and the electric lighting control. So we have already uh, pre preloaded uh, to our CPAP tool this measure called at the lighting sensor at the at the center of spaces. So we are going to add the lighting sensor to spaces of one specific category. In this case, we have to select a space category office because uh, these are the spaces with access to a uh, natural light. We have to specify the lighting set point. In this case, is find the default value, 500 uh, lux. And we need also to specify some aspects of uh, the control uh, when uh, the type of the control is continuous off, uh, continuous or step, uh, which is the daylighting minimum input power fraction uh, and so on. So um, according to the installation, uh, we are going to maintain in this case the default values. So we just need to apply measure now. And we will receive uh, a message for from the application that said that uh, 35 spaces are assigned to a space type category space cat office and uh, the measure have uh, has applied the daylighting controls uh, to these uh, spaces so we accept changes now we are going to save again our model just in case and when uh, the model is uh, safe in Open Studio, we can also uh, reopen it uh, through the uh, visual interface of uh, SketchUp. So we can uh, reload this model. And now we will be able to see that a daylight control has been uh, located in its exterior uh, space as we have uh, specified in the uh, daylighting control uh, open studio uh, measure. Uh, well, now uh, the first approach uh, for our model uh, will be ready uh, to run the simulation. To verify that everything is fine in our model, uh, we just uh, need to go uh, to this uh, tab, is the run section, push the run a button, and uh, wait until the workflow is in a in and the Open Studio model 
uh, is uh, running until uh, the end. As you can see, in this case, uh, we have uh, not received any error message, so everything is fine and in a couple of minutes the whole simulation uh, will be ready. Once the simulation has finished and we have verified that everything uh, works uh, properly in our model, uh, we are going to move uh, to the next section of this video tutorial. Uh, this is the uh, auto, -calibra auto calibration uh, procedure. Well, as a first step uh, for the calibration procedure, uh, we have to input the data related to actual energy consumption. For this, uh, we are going to use uh, utility bills, in this case, uh, electricity and gas, and natural gas. To do that, we have to move to this uh, tab, the first one, and go to utility bills tab here. Then we are going to, in, uh, to input uh, electricity utility bills. So we need in this section push plus button. We are going to introduce um, the electricity consumptions, consumption in kilowatt uh, hour. And we are going to use the uh, type start date and number of days in billing period to define uh, its uh, value. Now we just need to add a new object. Here is a start date. The number of this billing period would be 31 days. The energy use for this would be 36,817. And if we have the information regarding the peak for this period, we can use it as well. Now we move to the second uh, period. In this case, is related to February. February has 28 uh, days, and we include also the value for the energy use and the peak. Then we are going to continue with all uh, periods uh, exactly in the same way, uh, taking into account that uh, we need at least uh, 12 uh, values uh, from the utility bills to, uh, to get uh, accurate results in the calibration procedure. This is how uh, this section uh, looks like when we have finished of uh, entering a uh, whole data related to uh, electricity use. In this case, we have uh, 12 values, uh, one for each month of this year, 2021, that has been the, the year uh, selected uh, for uh, the calibration uh, procedure in this case. Now we just need to move on to the gas utility bill to do exactly the same with this uh, fuel. We are going to add a new uh, utility bill. We are going to introduce the values uh, uh, in unit terms, the same period for the year 2021, and the same option for introducing the billing period, what is a start date and number of days in billing period. Just add a new billing period by start date and number of days, 31, and the use, the energy use related to, to gas in terms, in this case, 3,038 terms. We just add an additional uh, value for February. And so on. Well, a uh, next step for the calibration of this model uh, is the adjustment of schedules and peak loads to actual ones. To do that, uh, we have uh, just reopened uh, our model in the SketchUp uh, interface, and we are going to uh, use uh, several functionalities included in the setup tool here under the tab Occupant Behavior. 
Here uh, you can find uh, several points related to lighting, electric equipment, domestic hot water, occupancy, thermostats, and so on. In this case, uh, we are going to uh, use uh, the adjustment for lighting, electric equipment, occupancy, and thermostat. And we are going to skip uh, from domestic hot water since this is not a relevant uh, service or a relevant uh, energy consumption in this specific uh, model. Well, we are going to start then uh, with this, with lighting. To do that, uh, we have uh, two uh, different options. Or complete here a path, a path to a file, a CSV file a schedule uh, with 8,760 values, fractional values, or remain this path, uh, uh, this path box empty, uh, which means a duplication of standard schedules uh, with a new name starting by actual. These new uh, duplicated uh, schedules must be then edited according to actual building uh, use. This will be done directly uh, on the OpenStudio application. So first we are going to select here, which is the space category we are going to adapt or to adjust, in this case, space category office, and the light power to, do, to adjust to the actual one, in this case, would be 10.3 a watt a per square meters. So now we just uh, push uh, OK. OK, and this schedule uh, has been uh, added to the model. We are going to do the same for the, the other uh, building uh, space category. Sorry, here for the corridors with again 10.3 and that's all. Now we are going to do uh, exactly uh, the same for uh, the option, the functionality electric equipment. Uh, we have here again uh, two options or complete uh, the path with uh, the path to a schedule with uh, the annual uh, values or again remain this path, this box empty and duplicate the, the actual standard uh, uh, schedules. Then we are going to do the same, uh, select the, the, cat the category and use uh, this equipment uh, power of 8.26, that is the actual uh, value. Again, we are going to do the same to the other um, space category. In this case, we are going to use the same value because we have developed a mean value uh, for the whole building. But please note that you can uh, choose uh, or, or complete different values for this uh, for this section for these uh, issues. Well, another one to adapt is the occupancy. In this case, again, we are going to select this and complete with the actual occupancy of the building, that is 18.5 uh, square meters per person for both space uh, categories, because I have just said we have uh, calculate a mean for the whole uh, building. Okay, and finally, uh, we are going to uh, duplicate also the thermostat schedules, thermostat schedule to both categories, space cut office. Now these new schedules have been added to our model and also the same for the second space category. Now this uh, new uh, schedules for set point has been, uh, have been added to our model. 
Now uh, we just need uh, to go again to the Open Studio application to edit and adjust uh, these uh, new schedules based on uh, actual uh, conditions of use. So we go to the run button to open again the Open Studio application. When this uh, is open, uh, we need to go to the second tab, Schedules. Here we can see a uh, two uh, a schedule set, uh, the actual one and the, the standard one. We are going to, each of them is composed by several uh, different uh, schedules for people, lighting, uh, electric equipment and so on. So to edit this, we just need to go to the schedules tab and here we can find the schedules we have just uh, created and uh, these schedules uh, have been automatically uh, assigned to uh, the space categories uh, that we have selected. So these schedules are actual 12 hour heating set point, actual cooling set point, actual lighting, actual people and actual uh, equipment. So we just need to go to each of them uh, for uh, editing. Well, as an example, I am going to proceed editing uh, the first one, the actual heating set point. In this case, our uh, building is closed uh, during the weekends, so uh, we need to switch off uh, the thermostat for heating uh, in Sunday and Saturday. So with this action, this is, com uh, this is uh, complete. Then regarding the uh, weekdays the thermostat uh, according to the user preference are currently uh, set to 23 uh, degrees 23 Celsius 23 degrees and uh, this start uh, from 6.30 a.m. until 8.30 uh, p.m. with no switch off in the in the midday so like this the new actual heating set point is uh, adjusted to the actual a occupant behavior a preferences so we just need to save our model again and now we need to proceed with the rest of uh, schedules so uh, when all uh, schedules have been adapted uh, to the actual ones we can uh, proceed with the auto calibration uh, through the parametric uh, assessment uh, tool and the use of optimization algorithms. To do that, uh, first of all, uh, we need to open the parametric analysis tool, a tool uh, that is included in the CEPAP tool uh, installation package. The first step is open an existing project because the CEPAP tool includes a template for this uh, procedure for calibration. So we just need go to OS1 folder to projects folder and open Ipanacea calibration, which is the template already uploaded uh, into the uh, CEPAP tool uh, platform. Here the first step is uh, save as with an other uh, name uh, in order to uh, remain available the template for future projects. In this case we are going to call it a calibration video tutorial. And just continue. We are going to select the folder 
where we want to save this. In this case, we are going to develop the folder here, for instance, in projects. Okay, when the project uh, is automatically generated, uh, we just need to uh, review uh, just a couple of uh, issues uh, within this template. First of, all, first of all, the default seed model. This is uh, our model. In this case, is the CPAP tool tutorial. It's our case. And the default weather file, in this case, is actual weather data included in uh, our uh, CPAP uh, tool. Here, we are going to use uh, actual weather data uh, from uh, Pamplona in Spain of the year 2021. Then we can just uh, review the algorithm settings, but it is not necessary uh, in most of cases. Uh, for instance, the number, the number of samples or size of the initial population and the number of generation that we are going to use in this parametric analysis tool. We are going to uh, maintain uh, this. Uh, well, we are going to change the generation to 40, for instance. Then we are going to review the Open Studio measures that uh, enable the, uh, the, the range of variation of the values of the calibration variables. In this case, we have uh, uploaded all these uh, default measures to change the values of the thermal transmittance of the envelope, the energy efficiency of the systems, the power lighting, the power of electric equipment, the value of the space infiltration, the value of the thermostat set points, the value of the domestic hot water demand, and the values of the windows properties such as uh, the thermal transmittance and the solar heat gain control. In this case, we just need to review the, the, the specific uh, construction where this uh, measure is going to apply. In this case, we are going to, uh, to, to change the value of the uh, low insulated wall double brick uh, cavity, that means the construction of the exterior envelope, and also we are going to change the value of the uh, roof, okay, the low insulated roof flat, with this uh, couple of things, the, the template is uh, ready. The project uh, then uh, includes uh, all the required information to uh, conduct the parametric uh, assessment uh, based on um, the algorithm requirements, uh, for instance, uh, the, the variation or the ra range of variation for the calibration variables, also the the optimization uh, function, uh, the function that is required uh, by the algorithm to try to find an optimal uh, solution, and also uh, it includes the, the connection uh, at server level to enable uh, conduct the, the whole assessment uh, on the server. Once the Panacea uh, calibration template has been adapted for our specific assessment object, we can proceed now uh, with uh, the parametric uh, assessment uh, that enables uh, to solve uh, the multi-objective problem, uh, minimizing the errors function. To do that, first, uh, we need uh, to connect to the server 
to the server uh, where the Open Studio uh, server is uh, available uh, to run uh, the assessment uh, on cloud. Once uh, we have connected uh, to the server, uh, we just need to push the run entire uh, workflow until uh, and wait uh, for a second, for a moment, until um, uh, your personal computer has uh, launched uh, the assessment to the server. So that means uh, you have um, you have sent uh, the whole information for conduct the assessment at server level. As you can see, uh, this number has already appeared. Uh, the first generation of the assessment uh, is uh, populated uh, with uh, 30 uh, individuals are here, the 30 data points. Uh, we have uh, already 10 uh, waiting uh, for running and uh, 14 of them uh, has already started. When uh, we have uh, checked this, now we can uh, check the simulation directly on a server, on our server. We just need to open here, and this is the Open Studio Cloud Management Console, uh, where uh, we can follow uh, the progress uh, of uh, our assessment. Here, the progress status with uh, the completed uh, uh, cases, uh, the cases in the queue, and the uh, cases that has already started uh, the simulation. When the this simulation uh, is finished, uh, we can see here uh, the analysis. Uh, we can also go to the view analysis, although the simulation is not uh, finished. After some uh, minutes, uh, we can uh, refresh uh, the screen and see the current um, the current status uh, of the of the parametric assessment. In this case, uh, we can see that uh, 78 uh, data points has already have already uh, completed, and uh, other 12 has already started uh, the simulation. Uh, in this case, uh, for this video tutorial, we have already uh, prepared this case uh, in advance some uh, days ago. Well, then when the optimization analysis has finished, uh, we have here around 1000 uh, data points uh, that we are going to uh, analyze to select the most suitable for our uh, calibration process. We have here some uh, features, some functionalities of uh, our management console, and we are going to move to the parallel uh, coordinate uh, plot to select our calibrated uh, model. This is the, the plot we are going to use as the key element uh, to uh, select the calibrated model. We are going to update the chart to uh, show just uh, the list of variables that we are going to use. And in this case, we are going to uh, be focused on the four uh, errors, the mean bias error and the coefficient of variation of the root mean uh, square error for the electricity consumption and gas, uh, natural gas consumption. So we are going to filter uh, this uh, graph to select uh, the data points uh, that has uh, error uh, values uh, closest uh, to uh, zero. So we are going to do that carefully. As you can see, the number of data points uh, is, uh, is going uh, uh, re to reduce uh, after this uh, filtering process until uh, we will just uh, one a case selected that we are going to use as our uh, calibrated uh, model. So uh, we can see that uh, the values of the calibration variables for each data point. 
Uh, in this case, we can go also to the calibration report and we can check that indeed uh, the, the requirements uh, of the ASHRAE 14 uh, git line uh, are uh, met. That is a value of less than uh, 5% for the mean via server and a value of less than 15% for the coefficient of variation of a square uh, mean uh, errors. So when we have designed this, we just have to download the data point. Once we have downloaded the data point, uh, we uh, find this folder. Uh, this folder uh, contains all these uh, files with reports and also the most important one is the model, the in.osm. We are going to take this uh, model and save it as our uh, calibrated uh, model. Then we are going to open it uh, through the Open Studio plugin for SketchUp. And then we are push the run button to open the Open Studio application and open it uh, through it. Now we are going to select the weather file for the calibrated simulation. That is the uh, weather file for uh, the city of Pamplona for 2021. And now we are going to upload uh, here in the measures section the reporting measure than uh, that uh, we would like to, to add, for instance, the Open Studio results and the calibration report. And now we just uh, need to move on to the Run section and push the Run button to conduct the simulation for the whole year. Now uh, we are going to move uh, to the next uh, section of this video tutorial that refers to the correction to a standard step of the assessment method 3 of the IPANACEA methodology. This is mainly a focus on three aspects related to the use of weather data, operational schedules and peak loads. So we are going to get a standard model taking advantage of our calibrated model. We are going to see the process through an example. Well, to do that, first of all, we are going to open our calibrated model with the Open Studio plugin for SketchUp. Once uh, the uh, model is open, we are going to save it as use the folder uh, prepared for a standard model and save as a standard model. A standard model. Then uh, to correct the aspects related to the actual schedules and um, the peak loads uh, related to the actual uh, behavior and transform uh, these aspects to a standard uh, standardized ones, we just need to go to extension, setup tool, use the section occupant behavior and use the functionality revert to standard. Then the model has been uh, reverted, accept changes and save. Then uh, we are going to open the Open Studio application through the run a uh, button. So we are opening uh, our standard uh, model through the Open Studio uh, application. To conduct the standard assessment, uh, we need to change the weather file because this is the previous one uh, used for the calibrated uh, assessment. So we are going to use, in this case, this uh, weather uh, data file that correspond to a normalized uh, weather data file it means synthetic data instead actual uh, weather data uh, corresponding to one specific uh, year. 
So now we can conduct again the simulation to obtain the results for the standard model, the standard assessment. Finally, we are going to take a look to some of the results uh, available for the standard model and for the calibrated model as well. Uh, carrying out a quick comparison between both set of results, including overall performance indicators, uh, partial indicators, and monthly disaggregation, per fuel and service. First of all, we are going to move on to the results tab in Open Studio application. Here we can uh, select uh, the report that we, we want to visualize in this uh, occasion, in this uh, case, the Open Studio uh, results. Here we have a first uh, table uh, of uh, some summary figures uh, regarding the total site energy, net site energy, and also the energy use index. Uh, if we move uh, on to the uh, next uh, table, we can find additional information, for instance, the unmet uh, hours summary, and more uh, interesting, the annual overview for the energy use. We can find here a disaggregation per energy service uh, for heating, equipment, lighting, fans, pumps, and so on. We can also uh, see uh, the figures in, in a way of table. Uh, for the consumption of uh, kilowatt per hour per service. We can find here also the disaggregation per energy fuel, in this case for electricity and natural gas. For instance, uh, we can find also the energy use uh, for uh, disaggregated for uh, fuel per electricity and gas. O also the monthly overview for each uh, service and uh, monthly, we can find yeah, the disaggregation of energy use for electricity in this case. Also uh, in a table with all the figures uh, in this uh, table, you can find all data uh, here. Besides the monthly disaggregation for natural gas in this case, in a table also, and so on. Uh, now, uh, all these data are, for instance, for uh, the calibrated model, but we can open uh, this report uh, from our uh, explorer for uh, the calibrated model, but also for the standard model. In this way, we can uh, check a comparison of these uh, both uh, cases. We can find here the building summary with different uh, figures. We, uh, we can move on to the annual overview, uh, the segregation. You can see that uh, the figures, the, the building performance uh, is uh, rather different uh, between the standard model and the calibrated uh, model, of course. For instance, here the disaggregation uh, per service, here the disaggregation uh, per energy fuel. And so on. Here in Open Studio application, we can also open the design a view uh, for a detailed uh, report of the variables. We can here is the data viewer for visualization of all of this information. Uh, we have here all dynamic results. For instance, the temperatures for each uh, building space. Also, we can find here the uh, photovoltaic electricity production annually. We can move uh, for to other applications, uh, like, uh, for instance, the, the heat map. Here we can uh, show also the, the photovoltaic electricity production according to the month and the hour of uh, uh, the day. Also, it's, it, this is an interesting functionality. It's uh, showing the data in a way of profiles. Uh, it's a, a mean 
of each uh, month, uh, for instance, for the uh, electricity production. Also, we have here also other interesting data like the zone air temperature and also we have included into the CEPAP a comfort data and indoor air quality data. For instance, here the, the concentration of CO2 profiles. Also, we can find the, the Fanger uh, index, the predictive mean vote, to uh, evaluate uh, how well is the comfort inside uh, each zone of the building. You can find also here uh, this type of information. Very useful. We can also uh, show all this data with an histogram. Uh, for instance, uh, for the predictive mean vote of the thermal comfort model, uh, here it is an example. Finally, thank you so much uh, for watching. For further information, please uh, visit our project website at ipanacea.eu. I also encourage you to follow us in our social networks. And if you prefer, you can contact us uh, directly uh, via email. Thank you.